Okay, so hello, ladies. You can't see me, so I'm going to. Let's see that lovely face. There you go. We're back. (laughs) Hello, ladies. Um, We are back this week, and we're going to do a couple of sessions, a couple of series on this, and ultimately, we want to end up talking about divorce. But we thought that before we get to what most people would consider the end part of the story, let's backtrack a little bit and talk about the start of the series, which is marriage. So we decided that we are going to to look at marriage and what it means from like a biblical perspective. I know we've done a series on submission. So if you're interested in that and... um, you haven't had a chance to listen you can catch up on the podcast and um, all our our sessions are recorded and put on there so you can go back and listen to that one on submission but today we're actually going to look at it from sort of a marital point of view what is biblical marriage um what's the aim and also what is the aim to achieve and sort of the remit in which a biblical marriage should operate and then hopefully once we've ascertained that then we can move on to divorce and what the Bible says about it. Um, so let's go to Giselle first. <gasps> Seeing as you know, you're so experienced in this. <laughs> what, only because, <laughs> what, because I've had three husbands. Is that well, right? yes, yes, exactly. And you know, I you can tell us the, the perspective from three three times, and that will come in handy as well later on in the series. But what do you? <laughs> Seems. What do you see to be biblical marriage, or marriage as the Bible defines it? Well, as the Bible defines it, now there are forty-seven Bible verses about marriage. Wow. wow. Okay, so that has to be pretty important. Okay, and okay, it combined for uh, love and com- uh, commitment, uh, but that's marriage. So, with forty-seven Bible verses, it has to be really important, and. Okay, I know jokingly I said you're picking me because I've got three husbands or I'm on husband number three. Yes, my first husband, I left him because I didn't like the way the marriage was going. And Mm. he has since remarried and him and his wife are very happy, apparently, and I'm pleased for them. I really am. But um, his wife is a Filipino man. Mm. So that's... Okay, that, that's that. Mm-hmm. Then my second husband, as you all know, um, he passed away two and a half years after the accident where mm-hmm. I had my encounter with God. And then I come back from uh, living in Florida to Northern Ireland. And then I've met my current husband, Michael. Um, and if he plays his cards right, I could go on to number four. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. No oh, more. Michael. I'm no more. No, no, no more, no more. Um, so had I been a Christian with my first marriage, it would have been my only marriage because I do believe, now even when I married my first husband, I did believe in the sanctity of marriage as between one man and one woman. Yeah. Uh, to love, honour and obey, richer for poor, sickness and health. Uh, mm. for better for worse and till death do us part I do believe mm. that I, re- I really do and more so now that I'm a Christian that has to be very important and as a Christian an older woman and as an ordained minister I do find it heartbreaking and saddening that so many people even Christians think it's okay still to live together without a marriage mm. And it's it's not right. Um, mm. Sometimes I can overlook people who've been living together and uh, they then become Christian later on mm-hmm. in the relationship. Mm-hmm. And they still think that they're OK until they're pointed out. No, no, you need to do it biblically. You need to have the, the whole marriage commitment. And then they do it. I, am, I, you know, I understand that they don't they don't know any better. But Christians should know better. They really should. And mm. I it's important as marriage you know it's a what is it's like your baptism it's an outward declaration of an inward decision mm, mm, mm. and mm. and you know, god preach, uh, preach. preach sister. 
But you know, it's it it it, it is important. You God defined marriage. Uh. And it, it has to be God ordained. It has marriage. Uh, I I even <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my head out the block here. Even somebody gets married in a registrar office. To mm. me, it's not a proper marriage because it wasn't God ordained. God mm. wasn't there. You know, it wasn't in a church or some place where there was an actual religious uh, type service with it. But um, yeah. It's one, it's one man for one woman, one woman for one man. So it's man and woman joined in holy matrimony. Mm, mm. Very interesting points that you've, you've, um, <laughs> you've been <laughs> out on the block there for. <laughs> but you know what? It's the truth. And that you do say, you know, we, we do see a lot of people cohabitating. Some for reasons um, outside of their control, you know, finances, are a big issue but like you say um I think sometimes we overcomplicate things and think oh we've got to have a lavish ceremony mm-hmm. or you know, a lavish wedding but we really don't because no, all that is not. really needed is you know a man or woman um a priest or an ordained minister mm-hmm. and and God and the Holy That's Spirit and so you know every other thing is what we would like it's not so much what's needed exactly. to make it work um yeah like when Michael and I got married, me being in Northern Ireland, some of my pals there started, you know, trying to organize the wedding. Mm. Some of Michael's pals here in Stranor tried to organize the wedding. And Michael said to me, why don't we just go up to Jamaica and get married? Mm. And I thought, well, you, you hear horror stories about going uh, to foreign lands. For, uh, and I said, you, why don't we just run off to Gretna Green? Mm. And that's what we did. We ran off to Gretna Green. We told nobody we're getting married. Uh, now, Michael had been divorced about 20 years before we got married, but he mm. lost his papers. So we mm. had to get new papers for Michael's divorce. Um, and I can't remember how much that cost us, like £80, I think. But we got Michael's new papers for to prove that he was divorced. We bought our marriage license. We paid for a minister to come out to Gretna Green to marry us. We paid for the hire of the hall at Gretna Green, a lovely little chapel, really mm. nice wee chapel. Um, we bought the two wedding rings and we got uh, an engagement ring for me. Um, and our wedding dinner, and it all came to something like 1,200 pounds. Mm. Wow, amazing. That's not a big deal. And mm. you for our wedding feast, we were going to go to McDonald's, but then Michael said that, you know, he's such a great guy. He said, only the best for me. So he took me to KFC and says instead. <laughs> we, had we, to went KFC. we did, seriously. We went to KFC for our wedding dinner. <laughs> and then and then, and then, we came back to the house, you see, and we, we let everybody know we were married. And that was it. It didn't know. Mm. Oh, yes. And the, the hotel, the venue where we got married at, they supplied the two witnesses. Mm. Nice. So for twelve, so it, so it is. Yeah, you know, it is doable, um, and you can, and and you can do it even a bit cheaper than that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You could have. Yeah, you really all can. The, all the things that people do now. I mean, are they even? You could get married without a ring. Let's face it. Yeah. Exactly. You don't need all those things. I think your your vows and your commitment. I mean, I've been a witness at um, a registry office wedding. And I remember seeing this couple just walking in their jeans. They look so casual. This man and his wife, they just came, you know. Within five minutes, it was done. They said the word, exchanged their vows. That was it. They walked out. I was like, okay. You know, so yes, there's not necessarily a need for a big fuss. Of course, some of us like weddings, okay? I've been a wedding guest many times. So if you want to throw a big party, please go ahead. Some of us need to party. Mm. <laughs> but <it doesn't laughs> make, make sure you like named all the weddings <laughs> but i think this is really important because i know somebody who um is cohabiting with her partner and both of them come from very strong catholic backgrounds and clearly the parents it's not the ideal situation for the parents right but i think for the the, the couple their thing was like oh we can't afford it yet so mm. i was like yeah, you can't afford the wedding of your dreams 
it's not a marriage that you can't afford so mm. yeah sometimes people really do mix the two yeah so that's an encouragement I mean I know we joke and we laugh about it but it really is an encouragement for everyone yeah. who finds themselves in that situation and thinking well you know what you, we can just get married now and then have a party when we can afford it yeah um like, that's you know such an encouragement so thank you for that Giselle and but my now, engagement I really really like my engagement ring but we didn't spend a fortune on it we got yeah. it from Gemporia the wholesale place online mm-hmm. and we saved like 500 pounds on it from high street value mm-hmm. yeah. You know what? It's doable. I think you may need to write an article for the website. Um, we need. We have a a, a blog section. You know you how do, how, yeah. to do, how to do a wedding on a budget it. wedding. <laughs> <laughs> a budget wedding. Yeah, it would be such a cool thing, right? Because there are so many ways, and I I also think that doing it your way is good because one it's creative but if you're really like a creative like what you're saying is that i like it and i think if people are creative they can do a lot for much less i remember reading um an article about a budget wedding where a couple they pretty much did everything themselves you know their decor and everything and their friends help and if you saw the photos of the wedding it looked beautiful because they were just creative. You don't always have to, you know, do an okay magazine type thing or mm. follow tradition. Because I think that's where the problem is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Like, like the basic wedding nowadays is something like thirty-two thousand pounds. Mm. Huh? Yeah. I'll buy a house. That money can fetch me a house. Exactly. <laughs> like you yeah. know, a, a, sim- a simple wedding, and then a Sidoni says throw a party afterwards mm, mm. I, I, to be honest even if you don't throw a party afterwards I, I think I come from a generation where I think a lot of our parents probably just went to church you know mm. back in the day it wasn't a big deal from Cameroon so but I think some of our parents maybe had big weddings but if I look at my parents generation the parents the people who even went in church it wasn't like too big a thing and mm. now what's so interesting now is that people have the wedding and a few mm. years later you have a renewal of vows i don't know if you guys know it, it does yeah it, it does and drag I'm, on and it does get expensive those yeah. vows that you make five ten years ago not matter you have They're a still valid. Like doing the re- it's like doing the wedding again because mm. i think sometimes people just want to capture that beauty of their wedding again which is fine but i just think you know one i don't think it's particularly necessary those who want to do it can do it but yeah there is that sort of thing of you have to have a party I don't even think let me put it this way not everybody wants a party right I have a friend who I went to school with she has a a good job between she and her husband they could have thrown a huge party but they chose not to they just Mm -hmm. walked into the registry office did their thing came out and told the rest of us yeah how many years now they have two two lovely kids and there's still no party. I don't think there's going to be a party. And that's fine. If mm. your marriage ends up being the party, I'm quite happy with that. Mm. Exactly. 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 And exactly. I mean, just going back in, you know, um, just taking us back into the Bible, like what do you think is a biblical marriage? What are the sort of terms and conditions that apply to make it a, a biblical marriage? Obviously, from a single person's perspective, what that's in your cool. mind do you? the term to be a biblical marriage it's a very good question i think for me a biblical marriage is one that is um, modeled of god's original intentions for marriage Mm -hmm. because we see in in a genesis that one god always wanted us to live together right god never wanted man to do his own thing and woman to Mm -hmm. do their own thing even though the bible does make allowance for people who can serve god as single people but you see that God went to a lot of trouble to make this thing happen. He created the man, acclimatized him to this environment, and then he pulls a woman out of her. So I think that God's chief aim was to find a way to unify these creatures that he was going to put on earth. Mm. So I think God's main thing there was really unity. Mm. And we see through marriage that they said a man has to leave his father and mother and become mm. clean with wife, and the two become one flesh. Mm-hmm. So there's something very unifying and eternal really like mm. it's, it's the first i think the first covenant that we really see in the bible so i think god's aim was that the two of you will work together mm-hmm. you will do things together you will treat each other as if because if you and i are one body i should be treating you as if you are me right mm-hmm. 
to preach sister preach yeah i think that's what god wanted god wanted it to be a union that would last eternally mm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's a very good point that you make there it's it's an eternal union based yeah. on friendship um and and also for me there's a kind of um what's the word there's a dominion that comes in marriage because oh, god yeah. makes adam and eve puts them in the garden and then says he says to adam you know you you've got authority and dominion over all the other creatures of the earth then he makes women and go well whilst i've made him in charge of the garden you're meant to help him look mm. after the you know look after the garden now you know the garden could be anything it could be primarily it could be his life um it could be his life vision which is why you know for single sisters um i always always say to them make sure that you like the way his garden looks if you do not <laughs> like the way his garden looks do not agree you to help agree. him to look after his garden because you will not enjoy the meaning over that garden yeah. um, so you know there's that co-authority and dominion over everything and it is a place of dominion when you get into I think Ngum and I or you know we talk about this a lot um you know I'm personally of the opinion that in a marriage there should be some kind of synergy one add one should give you bigger than three bigger than two if it's not then you know you're doing something wrong somewhere um and 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 to see some people or some marriages where they're living single, but they're married. You know, you, you get those couples and whatever works for anybody's fine. But if you're in one of those marriages, then maybe just stay, take a step back and think to yourself, is the sum total of this marriage bigger than each of us going at it, at it alone? And if it is, you're doing something great, please, I want to hear from you. Um, but you'll probably find that it's not because there is, a blessing that comes with that unity it's not to say those that aren't married um you know don't enjoy that but there is like we say you know it was sanctified and ordained by god for a reason i mean yeah. he knows that when the two become one there's a synergy that that happens um and multiplication happens you know he tells them to go forth and multiply yeah, you know, marriage yeah. Is a place of multiplication it's not just biological reproduction multiplication though that is one of the reasons why you know god created man and woman to procreate but there's also a kind of multiplication of talent multiplication of resources um and and, and multiplication of time because all of a sudden your day isn't a 24-hour day you actually get 48 hours in a day between both of you to do things yep um and so you know there is a kind of multiplication reproduction yes but also multiplication that happens when you know you're in a marriage and if you're not experiencing that then you know speak to a pastor speak to Giselle speak to myself or, or you know a Christian counsellor and just maybe try and find out perhaps where you think you could be going wrong um it is slightly harder for those without Christian husbands or spouses because it's harder to get them on board however you know the bible tells us where to pray without ceasing so you know pray for them but do your bit and let and trust god to do on, what only he can um but i think we also need to appreciate that marriage is this you know this place for unification multiplication um within like we say the terms and conditions of, of which god originally intended for it to be but there's there's an interesting bit of marriage as well that got me when I was looking at the Bible. It's almost like a business transaction. Oh, definitely, it is. It is. It yes, like it it's is. between families. It is. I mean, I was looking at Jacob and Leah, and you know, and and his father-in-law, and the whole negotiation. Now, I know, obviously, modern-day England, we're going to think that kind of you know, women should not be sold, and and women have got rights, and and whatever, and whatever else. But that was a very, I mean, nothing in the Bible is there by chance, right? And so if we believe it, then there's something to that that points to the fact. <laughs> what was Jacob's uncle called? <laughs> Laban. Laban. You know. <laughs> but that shows that kind of 
power play between in-law families, doesn't it? It shows that dynamic right from from the beginning. Yeah. Also, you know something, it, going <laughs> back to your Jewish traditional weddings, and even it, it, it even happens today, just you mm. saying, Sedona, that it's it's a business contract. Mm. It's lovely laid out, and what they what their um uh marriage certificate or contract is called is called a ketubah mm -hmm. and what it is normally when you're going to be divorced or mm -hmm. you're sorry you're signing sorry you're signing a prenup it's what you won't get from the prenup out of a, a, a western marriage yeah. but in a jewish marriage even today the ketubah outlined what the woman will get good I like that. <laughs> if, if the husband <laughs> dies, <laughs> he leaves her. So it's mm. it's her, it's her, it's her protection. Yes, mm. is mm. and I think mm. that's a lovely thing that you, it's uh you if she if, if I die, she will get all my property. She will get all mm. my wealth. Or if I leave her, she'll get half of it or what or whatever. So that's mm. that's her ketuba. That's that that that's her marriage contract. Mm. Mm. That's really interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Because you don't really think about. I mean, obviously, the Bible does say that women are the weaker vessels, and I know some women will kick me for this, but we do need that protection, and and we we also get that picture in the Bible. Now we have heroines in the Bible. I mean, we spoke of Esther, um, you know, last last week, didn't we? But we have that picture in the Bible of the man protecting the woman. Um, and, you know, even Abraham does it, doesn't he? When he lies that, I mean, he, obviously he does it for his own selfish reason. <laughs> but that, you know, scares his sister. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> but but technically she was a sister. Abraham, <laughs> technically she was a sister because... They were believers, weren't they? So it was well, yeah. the family of God. Well, but I love the way he I love the way he justified himself. I was like, yeah, but technically it's my Abraham, you were looking after yourself. <laughs> but you get that image, don't you? So you do get that image of eight two families coming together, like in the you know, the case of Jacob and Laban, and you know, all throughout the Bible, we do get that that image. It yes. It is primarily between the man and the woman, but it is also between two families. Mm, um, yeah. And so, you know, you've got to think if that multiplication applies to those two, then imagine how much more good can come yeah. out of two families coming together um, in unity. Now, you know, not all families get on, not all in-laws no. get on. If you no. can forgive, forgive and move on and be the bigger person. And if you can't, you know, there's grace available for all of us to, yeah. to tap into. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, not I mean, always it's not easy. Good. It's not good you said that because I'd never really thought about it like that in terms of families coming together like that. Mm -hmm. I know that we come from African backgrounds, so it's easier for us to you hear this, it's a synergy between families, but I, I have never thought of the possibilities of joining mm. two families. So oh, that's endless. And I think I've always, I've thought of it more in a sense, in a negative way, because mm. there are people who exploit that. You see families mm -hmm. in politics, for example, mm. or families that are big in business. So mm. they use that synergy always for some kind of almost a selfish, selfish promotion. Yeah. What mm. people thought about it the other way that this is now a bigger pool for us to draw resources to mm -hmm, help each mm -hmm. other to and mm -hmm. in a way I think on a low scale we even see that let's say for you and I in Cameroon you have like you have cousins cousins who are now your cousins right yeah <laughs> you do things with them yeah you know mm -hmm. I remember being in, in boarding school and I had mm -hmm. something was we had a mutual cousin Mm -hmm. And I was able to be on friendly terms with her because of that. So mm -hmm. on certain levels, it can work. And it's mm -hmm. a really interesting thing to look at. What could be the potential if families were not at each other's throats, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. immense, isn't it? Because, you know, the Bible does paint this picture. I mean, yeah, Jesus himself says, um, you know, when he's asked about, when the, you know, the Pharisees come and ask him about, um, you know, <sighs> Can a man divorce his wife? And and he, you know, he looks at them and he goes, "Well, 
your why do you want to divorce your wife to deal with you know your own heart basically but um it's interesting because jesus kind of alludes to the fact i think it's matthew 9 he um says there that marriage is permanent so yeah. if even if a man you know should divorce his wife but then go marry somebody else he still commits adultery because he's eternally married to his first wife um and that works you know the man there i will you know i want to very loosely assume it's a capital m so that works for, for women as well you know if you should divorce your husband um now that's not to say there aren't reasons within the bible for you know divorce there are we're talking about you know people who treat marriage like some kind of consumable um mm. and if i'm happy with it i'm in if i'm not happy i'm out and and, and they kind of look at marriage from you know their feelings and i think this is the issue that we're kind of dealing with today um it's it's to know that marriage is a lot bigger than your feelings you yeah. you know the butterflies in your bellies will go heck some mornings you wake up and you've got lions in your bellies not even butterflies like yeah. they're ready to, to tear up <laughs> definitely yeah definitely you know but it's it's that conviction that you will rely on the word of god and not your feelings because god's design for marriage and it's like what she was saying earlier it's you know it's an outward um demonstration of your inward commitment you know and and it isn't it's I was listening to um, Dr. Michael Youssef about three weeks ago, and he made a very good point. He said, um, when you look at marriage, you, marriage is a matter of the mind. He said, Hollywood and media have taught us to think that marriage is a matter of the heart. He says, if it's the matter of the heart, you know, the Bible's very clear. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Yeah. Who can tell? You know, so the Bible's very, very clear. Yep. that the heart of man is not only fickle it is wicked mm-hmm. and so your heart will change your feelings will change your emotions will change and he said that you know and this struck me because i would never really thought about it that way he said marriage happens in the mind and that's why the devil will attack your mind and remind you when you know when you're about to, to have a, an argument with your spouse the devil will remind you how many times you know yes. he's committed yep. that offense yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah he won't attack how you're feeling he will yeah. attack your mind and commit to memory mm-hmm. the 399 times that he's committed that particular offense in the last month um, and so he said you've got to look at it you know when when the bible talks about marriage you know it's all it is exactly like the relationship between jesus and the church because when you decide to to become a follower of christ it's a matter of the mind. You make a commitment. Yep. Um, you know, the Bible talks about a transformation, a renewal of your mind um, when you become a Christian. So when you become married, and, you know, the Bible does use that parallel between marriage and Christianity. Um, it's, a, it's something of the mind. It's a function of the mind. It's not a function of the heart. If you're married because, you, you know, you fell in love and you had butterflies in your belly, I guarantee you one day you will wake up and those butterflies will be gone. They'll be replaced by roaring lions and you've got to find a way to quieten those lions. And for most people that can't, their marriages fail. Mm -hmm. Um, So you've got to find a way to make a commitment of the mind, um, which I thought was quite interesting. I mean, GNA, you know, you you kind of, you you say to us about, you know, this this culture at the moment where it's kind of like, oh, if I'm feeling good today i'm in and if i'm feeling you know not feeling it or not in love with you quote and unquote in another 10 years i'm out i mean what do you say to this to to people that you know feel that way what encouragement can you give to them that's sad that we the way i i I would put that is we're living now in a generation of it doesn't work chuck it away and yeah that's not only with electrical appliances like you. I remember back in the 80s when I bought my first DVD player and it cost me like £350 for a DVD player. That was a lot of money in the 80s. Mm. But when that DVD yeah. player went faulty, you got it repaired and you yeah. got it repaired and it worked again. Nowadays, you get a DVD player for about 20 quid 
And mm. when it goes faulty, you chuck it in the bin, you go out and buy another one. So it's, it's not worth getting repaired. But sadly, that's even the way people treat their marriages. Mm. And, you know, come on, let's face Valuable, it. Valuable, is it? It, yeah, ex yeah, exactly. And, you know, and let's face it, we're not going to be all lovey-dovey and see the, the world through rose-tinted glasses and be uh, gazing into each other's <laughs> eyes 24-7, 365 days a year for the rest of our lives. There are going to be ups and downs and swings and roundabouts. But, you know, if there's something wrong, fix it. Uh, G, mm. can I do, you mentioned, and I think Sidoni um, also talked about this, that you know, your DVD player now, it's probably not worth repairing because it's only 20 quid, right? Mm. So I wonder what has happened. Why has marriage become devalued in these modern times? Because I imagine that at See. one point we're held in quite high esteem and that's why people tried, mm. you know, what's, what's happened to the value of marriage on the stock I think market? So part, partly it's a societal change. Um, the media's got a lot to answer for this. Hollywood has got a lot to answer for this. But also as a society, we've become very individualistic. We have lost our sense of community. Yep. So, you know, whereas, you know, if if you were you and your wife, for example, I say this completely loosely, um, you know, 50s, 40s, I'm going back to the 30s, if you had a problem. Um, your aunt knew about it your mother knew about it who would then tell her sister who would then tell you know you, her grandmother who would then mm -hmm. so before you know it your whole family the whole world and it's and it's auntie knew what marital problems you were having and people mm -hmm. would come to your aid and try mm -hmm. to help you um, yes. so I think the fact that we've lost accountability mm -hmm. yeah yeah um so people think you know it I can yeah I can, it's me and my wife I can do it today or it's me and my husband and then tomorrow if I don't feel like it I can just go and sign it that's it they're not accountable to anybody we've lost that whereas you see that in community or, or in countries that have got more of a community lifestyle um it wouldn't surprise me if the divorce rate is a lot lower because mm. people think of the bigger picture they don't just think of them and their wife and their nuclear family they then think hang on a minute I've got my mother to answer to and her sister and her brother yeah. and Uncle Joe down the road. And then I'm going to get a phone call from Uncle blah, 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 blah in America. <laughs> and before you know it, the whole family is discussing yeah, it. It's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, I really like the idea. It's really that. Oh, <laughs> dear. But could, you would think, I was just thinking about this today while I was on my walk. I remember when I came to this country in the 90s, um, relate used to be really big right the mm. counseling service and I think there was such a huge emphasis then on helping couples stay together so I suppose as um, communitarian societies then began to sort of you know great if you like disperse then people try to come up with solutions like relate but I don't know I, I just don't feel that you hear a lot about marriage counseling as much mm -hmm. as it used to happen, perhaps more in, in Christian settings, but I just don't seem to hear about it so much. Mm -hmm. I think it's only because people, people, um, like I said, there's no accountability. It's it's me, me, me. It's a very me culture. Oh yeah. But I don't that's, owe you anything. I don't owe you an explanation. If I want it, fine. If I don't want it, fine. You know, there's a very me, 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 me culture. Yes. Um, and and this is it's it's sad because I also think that there's like you were saying about relate um we've lost that as well and and in a way now this is a very whilst we you know I'm grateful for the welfare um state and the benefits that it affords people that genuinely need benefits and and need to live off benefits there is something to be said for when somebody can be financially better off single yeah off the state than they are married mm -hmm. yeah. um, so finances also and it's not a reason why people should get married also or well, not the only reason why people should get and stay married but it's a big deal it, it is. forces people yeah. to to face to stand there and fight if you know that your children are going to be worse off if you leave that marriage 
you're forced to stay there and fight for it. And you only give up if it's absolutely necessary for you to walk away. Yes. But when people have a plan B, they tend to think, I'll be all right on my own. Yep. If not, I'll get working tax credits or I'll get, you know, X, Y, Z credit. And mm. so that extra level of motivation, which finances can be, um, it's not there anymore. No. It's, you know, yeah. how many times, I mean, when I'm speaking to people of older generation, um, you know, they'll often say to me, I stayed for, for my kids. I stayed because I wanted my kids to have a better life. But then after about five years, I just realized the man was never going to change. So we might as well live together and die together. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, that's also, I mean, what do you think? I agree with everything. Yeah, I, I, I agree with everything you said. I, I, I really do. And you know, very interesting. You said there at the end, uh, you know, and after five years, you decided just to stay because the man wasn't going to change. Why do we go into marriage thinking, right, OK, I don't quite like that he's doing that but i'll change it you yeah know, if you have to change them is it, is it really somebody you want to go into a lifelong partnership um, with preach sister preach, <laughs> preach this next week <laughs> so, no, seriously you know why I want to change you oh don't, don't please don't get me started don't. and then you know, there's so 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 many marriages break up because sex there wasn't enough sex there yeah. wasn't the worst sex the way uh, I wanted to be done. Do you know, when a relationship is truly based on love, mm. and then as the Bible defines it, not exactly and friendship, sex. Now, don't get me wrong; I thoroughly enjoy sex. Sex is absolutely brilliant, but mm. it's only the icing on the cake. Mm. Without the cake, you can't have the icing. You can mm. still eat that cake, guys. You can, you can, and to have a relationship, but, but to have a relationship that goes beyond sex is far, 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 far better. Oh my goodness, Giselle, can I just stop you there? I think you've said something really amazing, and you guys are gonna laugh, right? But I think, like, we've talked I feel about like we need to carry this on next week. I think we do, yes. <laughs> Yes, because we're going to wind up here very soon. We are, okay. aren't we? Yeah. But I just wanted to make a comment about what you said because I feel like popular culture influences the way people think, even about sex and intimacy. And I remember once, this is even before I was born again, watching a sermon and a, a pastor spoke about intimacy. And then he said, by the way, when I say intimacy, it does not necessarily mean sex. You guys would enough. And I stood there like, what, pastor? You know? <laughs> Yeah, I'll be honest, right? So I think it's it's something, and it's a huge thing. We, we we could look at this next week, but I think it will be really nice to touch on intimacy because I think that is so important. Yeah. People need to see that this is a higher level thing in marriage. Mm -hmm. Preach. And that Very, note, G, do you want to pray us out? <laughs> no, I prayed us out last time. It's up to you. Or, yeah, or okay, go on. Nagum, to pray us out. Come on. Right. <laughs> Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together again mm. in fellowship with you, Lord. We thank you for your enlightening love that you are able to break down these mm. things that sometimes seem so complex, Lord. You are able to use us. You are able to use your word to teach us your mind mm. on the things that matter. You are able to use your Holy Spirit to really bore through complex things and you know open our minds we pray father that whatever we've said here today that you've been able to use us as your instruments to minister mm -hmm. to our sisters to our brothers to whoever this video ma matters to we speak life into the marriages that are having problems at the moment lord we pray that your holy spirit visit and repair these marriages wherever they need repair we also pray for all those who are aspiring to be in this most sacred sacrament that you have actually ordained for us, that you will give us the eyes and the ears to hear you and mm -hmm. to see well, to look before we leap mm -hmm. and to pick the right partners who have a vision that is your vision too, Lord, and that you will be able to give all of us as individuals and as couples mm -hmm. the blueprint that you have for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. So part two next week, ladies. Yes, it sounds Please. like sounds like we've opened up Pandora's. Mommy, box. see up more screens. Mm -hmm. right, hold on, we stop the live stream. Uh, okay. Bye bye, everybody in Facebook land. Bye my bye. mouse, there, there's, there's my cursor there. I couldn't find my cursor. Goodbye, guys. So that's bye bye to live stream. Bye, folks. Bye. bye. That's the that gone. Bye bye. And Bye bye to recording and Zoom. See you next week for part two. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good day, buenas dias, buenas noches, whatever everyone around the world. Uh, we've got the lovely Sedona, founder of Christian Women in the UK, and we've got the even lovelier, nicer, wonderful, fantastic name. <laughs> I hope everybody is hearing that, especially somebody on this line. Yeah. I'm really, well. I'm really, I'm really being nice to you. I'm really sucking up to you since you're the boss lady tonight. Okay. And they have been, and that's been, and that's they have, is admin at uh, one of the admins at um, Christian Women in the UK. And then we've got yours truly, Giselle, another admin at Christian Women in the UK, as well as my own ministry, Pearls of Grace Ministries. Tonight, we're going to be talking about marriage again, part two. We spoke about marriage last week and we thought that... Oh, just before we start, can we just um, say that Pearls of Grace have a new, their own building. Come on, Giselle. So if you ever find yourself in Strenra... Oh, I forgot about that. I really did. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay, folks. Pearls of Grace now has got its very, very, very own building for its own church instead of renting village halls and other pl places and everything. So uh, Sedona <laughs> says, if you ever find yourself in Stranraer, it is number 95 George Street, Stranraer. And there's a warm welcome Amazing. to everyone. <laughs> it's, it's really... A and a biscuit. <laughs> yeah, this is absolutely brilliant. And the grand opening service is Sunday, the 1st of May at 6 p.m. And it's going to be a Holy Ghost party. You, what is it, Naeem? A church, a happening church? A happening church. Hashtag <laughs> happening church. Happening church, that's it. Well, anyway, back to, yeah, back to business of tonight, because this is about Christian women, not Earls of Grace. Come on. Um, <laughs> so yes, we spoke so much about uh, marriage last week, ladies, didn't we, that we felt that uh, there was a part two, maybe even a part three coming from it. Um, mm -hmm. I, th I, th I think we covered last week mostly about what we feel, believe, perceive our opinion on biblical marriages mm -hmm. to be. But we also mm -hmm. then touched on last week about um, finances in mm -hmm. marriage. Mm -hmm. And I suppose we could even maybe uh, talk to tonight about those abusive marriages. And I want to uh, say as well that um, abusive marriages aren't always just the females being abused. There could be mm -hmm. men abused as well. So I hope that whatever we're talking about actually helps some men as well, because I know men could be watching this on playback on YouTube or whichever other social medias mm -hmm. we put it out on. So let's hope it helps somebody. So I'm going to go straight in and I'm going to ask Miss Sedona, I so I am, to kick everything off since it's your uh, platform, my dear. You're going to kick it all off. Um, and what were we talking <laughs> about last week? What? What? Experienced married woman. <laughs> Be good. Experienced married woman. Well, there you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, um, what we finished off talking about last week about the financial side of marriage do you want mm -hmm. to pick it up from there yeah I mean we were we were talking about you know obviously um, I think people that stay because it benefits them um, yep. to stay and I think the conversation came up as well with um, the point came up where we're talking about perhaps the the welfare states, weren't we? And how that perhaps made it easier um, for people to walk away. But I think we should also maybe just emphasize and point out the fact that 
there is also um, abuse that can go on mm-hmm. um, in marriages with regards to sort of finances. I mean, you know, Giselle, you're a pastor, so I'm sure you you speak to a lot of women and, and, you know, certainly some women do come to me and, you know, they go through financial abuse. Um, yes. So it's important that we recognise that um, and get help, you know. Uh, the group is open. Also, just to say, there are quite a few. We're quite blessed on the group as well. We have quite a few Christian counsellors. So, if you're not, you know, with us now and you want to ask either in private or anything, um, send any of the admins a message. We can always put up a post for you anonymously. Um, yes. There's quite a few women on there. I know a few ladies have asked, and there have been quite a few qualified Christian counsellors that have um, come up. What we might do at one point, actually, Giselle, if we get a chance, is find those information and pin them to the top. So yeah, we can do that. Can access, mm-hmm. yeah. um, can access that help there if they need it. But yeah, I mean, but obviously if you're with us tonight, then you know that, you know, it is a thing and we're not saying that, it, you know, it doesn't exist and we're not so blind as to know that you know, when we talk about abuse, it's not only physical. Um, mm-hmm. There is, I was I was listening to something a few months ago and on Premier Christian Radio, one of the pastors there said, actually, for a Christian spouse, one of the worst abuse could be spiritual abuse. Yep. Um, and he, so he was explaining it sort of in the sense of, so, for example, the man was, or the woman, or whoever was getting was upset, and then they go to pray, for example, at night. So he gave the example in that setting. It was a pastor and his wife, um, and obviously they had a domestic row or whatever. But every time he would go to to pray, he would, you know, pray things along the lines of, "Oh God, this woman that you gave me." is you know she's not very good or you know she's annoyed me xyz times today please forgive her and you know, just basically wow. making her feel belittled and yes. abuse but he was obviously doing that because they were praying together and mm-hmm. so it's i think you know we should also just say if you find yourself in any kind of and we're not blind we know it exists and the amount of women that you know come to me and, and Giselle I'm sure as well and you know tell us their stories we know that these things exist but there's help out there um again on the group there are loads of ladies on there that are willing to pray with you and for you so if if you ever find yourself in that situation please please reach out we have also got um details of charities that can help if you you know if you ever find yourself in need of either financial help or emotional help um some of the more secular charities as well are really really good so they'll help you escape any sort of situation um but it's like anything the first you know the first step to healing is actually acknowledging that there's a problem amen um, that is yeah so, yeah. <laughs> so getting to that point is is important and so I you know it's it's important to just say that we're not blind we know that you know these issues are there we speak to lots mm-hmm. of women over the courses of of months and um so we know the issues are there um I'm not a qualified counsellor myself but there are ladies on the group that are and we can point you in that direction um yeah. and yeah so it's yeah let's just let's just set that out there because I think that's important to to say whilst it's good to talk about marriage from a biblical point as we've been discussing it's important also to acknowledge that for some it isn't always a smooth experience um yeah but there is help available um either through the group or we can point you in the right direction anonymously if you want um to get that help and really, at the end of the day, that's what we're here for, is to help each other, isn't it? Mm. Uh, anybody, and, and yes, the group is uh, women only. So any sisters out there that do need help, no matter what it's like, we're here to listen to them and help point them in the right direction. 
uh, I know sometimes there's some abusive relationships that their social media and their phone calls and things are monitored and things like that. But there are ways of getting messages out and if you can get a message to us, um, we could look at from there so we could and do, do, do something. Because uh -huh. being 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 in a controlling relationship, that was very interesting what you said too, Sedona, that um, about a, this, the spiritual side of it, you know, the man putting his wife down or, you know, and using the, the, the cover of prayer to do it. Uh -huh. That is diabolical. Ball, that really is, and that That's does happen. Mm. That's real manipulation, isn't it? Really, mm -hmm. it is. You see what you have avoided now by being single, my dear. <laughs> Ask Sidonis, anyone did I tell you? <laughs> I was being honest with Sidonia, right? And I said to her, that, you know, when you're not in Christ, you have ideas about marriage, okay? Mm. And then when you come to Christ, it's a different thing. And I said to her that. In all honesty, if I'd been married before the age of 40, there were concerns that it wouldn't have lasted. This is something mm. that I can say very, because I think I was the kind of person who was like, you know what, I believe, I mean, I believed in marriage and the sanctity of it. You know, I was raised with parents who were married until my father passed away. You know, I was raised in the Catholic church, which holds marriage up as a sacrament. So I knew how, you know, holy this thing is, and I'd seen it work, but I also knew that you know, I couldn't kill myself because of this. So my attitude was, if I was married, I would give it my best shot. But yes. if I tried and tried and tried, and this person just didn't want to know, then I'd have to walk out. You know, I'd seen presidents mm. in my family to know that you can survive if you leave a marriage. So I think I just had mm. a more, put it this way, it would have been easier for me to walk out. But I think now, because I look mm. at it as a covenant, this was one of the things that was actually kind of, when I, came to know Christ I was like wow okay how does this thing really work right because I think sometimes the advice and you too can help here that people get in church in terms of marriage counseling sometimes it also is problematic <laughs> because you know I think sometimes people are like the marriage is an eternal covenant no matter what stick to that covenant and I think mm. in a way then you almost make it like the covenant is an agreement with God, yes, but you almost make the covenant more important than, like the covenant becomes an idol, right? Yeah. So I was mm -hmm. saying to you, I remember watching an old gospel Nigerian movie, <laughs> right? And this, I think it was a man and his wife were having problems, right? For whatever reason, things weren't going very well in the bedroom. And then the, the man, I don't know who, which member of the couple took it to the, the pastor first, right? And as soon as the pastor heard, the pastor was like, he brought out the bit where Paul says, do not deny your wife. <laughs> your <laughs> and so for the pastor, that was it. But what I loved about this film is that the pastor's wife actually challenged him because the, mm. the pastor, he had quoted the Bible. That was it. The pastor's wife was like, but hold on, no. Then she brought back scriptures to also say that, look, this could be deeper. So I think mm. we're just trying to show how sometimes some people will just take bits of scripture yeah. And they just say, oh, submit to your husband, that's it. He's beating you. But they're still saying, yeah. yes, we know mm. he beat you black and blue every day, but yes, submit. And yeah. mm. I've, I've seen it coming from an African. Yeah, no, you make, you, make, you make a very good, a very yeah. good point. And yeah. 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 But we have such a high tolerance for domestic violence. And yeah. then when you bring now people add religion on top of it, there are pastors who you almost kind of justify it. Um, no matter what, you know, you are a good Christian. And then now what they do, they put the emotional burden on making the marriage work on the wife. Oh, you know, you're a good Christian. Be a daughter of God. Yes, we know your husband is wrong, but pray. Pray for him. Yeah. I know, some, I know a story of somebody who is in a mental institution now in Germany because of this. Oh, no. She ended up killing her baby because she just got to a state of mental yeah. breakdown, you know. And the guy has moved yeah. on and remarried. So we have to be very careful. What advice we give people big time we, we, we really do but you know as, as you say too that some people use the scripture you know you should you know, you're the woman your husband's the head of the house you should do what he says you should do you should do you should do you should do and but people don't really get into the crux of the matter of what is wrong with the with with, with the whole thing mm -hmm. and I, I you know i'm not saying that I, I'm not condoning, you know, I'm, 
if somebody feels that they're in a relationship like that and they need to get out and divorce, do it. Now, I'm not promoting divorce. I'm, I, if you can stay in a marriage and sort it out, sort out the problems and become a peacemaker and not a peacekeeper. You know, there's two differences. You know, being a peacekeeper oh, to me like is, is, don't, is, is that a really good one? You know, a That's a really good one. Yeah, a peacekeeper is someone who will do everything to please everybody else and just bite their lip and stand back and say nothing and go mm. along with the flow. But to be a peacemaker is to find a solution to mm. keep everybody happy. Mm -hmm. like yeah. That. You like that, don't you? That's deep, yeah. Pastor G. Preach. Isn't, it, isn't, isn't that very deep? I'm going to whole retreat around that topic. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So you know, sometimes like, I feel, anyway, in modern society today that we talked about well we talked about it last week but people go into a marriage and their attitude is oh well if it doesn't work if i can't change when it doesn't work sure we'll get a divorce and sometimes the ink isn't even dry on the marriage certificate and they're away mm -hmm. down the divorce court no. they haven't given it a chance to find out each other because dating people and you come on us us ladies you know when we're dating our, 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 our husband, when we were going out, didn't we do our hair and we did our makeup and put on a nice outfit and put on a dab of perfume and put on the heels and all the rest of it? You know, we looked a million dollars and mm -hmm. men always saw us looking our best. They didn't see mm -hmm. us waking up in the morning with hair all over the place and no work it on, you know, and, you know, and, 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 and all the rest of it. And we didn't see them with all googly eyed and horrible smelly breath and first thing in the morning. There's a big adjustment to do. There really is a big just mm. do to marry to married life. And it it's a partnership. Yeah. So it's 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 not a 64 day. It's not a 37 day. It's a 50-50. And you've got to work together. Mm. And you've got to work together. And especially when kids come along, you need to be on the same page with the and children. Yes. And mm. uh not sort of you, not if mom says, don't do that. And daddy says, oh, yeah, here, go ahead and do it. Don't do that in front of the kids. You know, if you disagree mm. with, with what your uh, partner's saying to the children, I say, back your partner up in front of the children. But then when the children are offside, say, well, I don't think yeah. you did that right. Yeah. You know, do not have disagreements in front mm -hmm. of the children. Yeah. Otherwise, you just confuse them, I think. And also, mm. you have to understand that, you know, children are learning as they grow up. And whether parents like it or not, they are teachers. I don't care. Children are watching, aren't they? Mm. How aren't they? Children, celebrities to be their role models. The truth is, it's you that your, your kids are seeing every day, right? And this really dawned on me when one day I just looked back and I realized that, hey, a lot of my views that I have in life, a lot of my values are built from my parents. Mm -hmm. From what I saw my parents doing, from you know, the mm. conversations that we used to have, you know, even mm. the, the notion of being kind to people or whatever, I learned that more from my parents than any church, you know. Mm. So I think they, there's a saying that the house is the first church, right? The home is the first mm -hmm. church, right? Now. So I think this thing about parents contradicting each other is really important because kids are also very smart, you know. Kids can learn mm -hmm. to manipulate their parents. They'll know that, okay, <laughs> or they'll come and say, oh, mom said. So at the same time, if you guys are contradicting each other, you are literally raising up a manipulator. You are raising, mm -hmm. you're teaching your child to learn how to manipulate people. And you think that's going to stay at home? They will find mm -hmm. ways when they go out there, you know, with their friends, with their mm -hmm. teachers. And if they begin to see people who are on the same page, that's what they'll try and do. They'll try and create a situation. Mm -hmm. They'll learn how to do divide and rule. So parents really have to be careful. Yeah, and I think you know, going going back to what you were you were saying earlier, it's important to find a good church, a Bible believing church, um, a church that preaches the truth, because, yeah. like you said, you know, and that example you gave of of that girl, you know, who due to bad advice to stay in that abusive marriage is now obviously in, in a mental institution but if I would pray and hope that if you know she was part of a good church um 
and took her problems to her pastor, they wouldn't have advised her to stay there. Yeah. Um, you know, it so it's important that advised her to stay. It was very sad because mm. she actually mm. reported it to the pastor and they kept asking her to mm. persevere. Mm. That's sad. That really is sad. I mean, where is, is the church? So, yeah, I mean, if, if... Because you have to wonder, is the church even part of her life now? I don't know that much. But yeah, I think pastors have to be very careful because I'm sure even the pastor did not anticipate mm -hmm. what happened. This girl literally killed her child, mm -hmm. was about to kill herself, and she was stopped. But look at it now. And I'm going to put my head out in the, the block here, and I can see the Madame the guillotine coming down on my right, left, and centre. But taking a problem like that, a woman taking a problem in her marriage to him to a male pastor, mm. men don't really understand what women are going through. Mm. They don't. Um, because for a man, it's okay, sort of you, look, just go home and make him his favourite meal and uh, uh, everything will be fine and everything will be good. Mm. No, no, it won't be. It, 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 it won't be. I, there should be, I think anyway, there should be in all churches, there should be an awful lot more females in leadership, not necessarily pastors, but mm -hmm. in some sort of form of leadership. And they should be approachable for a woman to be able to go to and speak to. Because there's lots, there's lots of things I wouldn't talk mm -hmm, to a man mm -hmm. about. You know, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, will, I will share it with my, 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 my sisters. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. Isn't it? Yeah, That's a good point. Yeah. About yeah. the church that you go to. Because, and like you said, these are the sort of things that the church can then look at and look to maybe instituting some kind of healing ministry or whatever in the church where yeah. maybe you have the women in the church who are very capable. You know, there's mm -hmm. always that one very approachable lady in the church that everybody just goes to, right? <laughs> maybe that's yeah. her name. Yeah. And if, it was, mm -hmm. it was, then if she was willing to work with the pastors and then people could go to her or sometimes, and I like this where some Christian counselors will tell you, okay, this is the bit that I can do for you, but you know what? Maybe for certain things, you need to see a qualified psychologist, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and then they could work. You have people who do that, or you now have, psychologists who are a Christ, have a Christian background, so they would do their mm -hmm. intellectual training and then they use their, they come to their Christian faith as well. I mean, I, I remember somebody telling me that in the States, this is quite common actually. Someone was telling me that she had counseling and what was great for her was that she had Christian counseling and her counselor, I think was a trained psychologist, but was also able to help mm -hmm. her from a Christian point of view. So when she was giving her like things to do, you know how, the counselors will give you advice and stuff then she would give her bible mm. verses to also meditate on i that's mean how good. Cool is that, mm -hmm. right? that's good yeah you could have get that professional thing they diagnose the problem and then they still okay and it's actually interesting because the bible is really a healing manual it if is you understand it. Mm -hmm. if you understand it and sidoni is gonna laugh when i say this but anybody <laughs> open the book of Isaiah, please just open oh yeah that book. <laughs> anything in isaiah is like a tablet <laughs> well, I, <can> see. <laughs> yeah, well, I, agree, I agree with you there and you well, we're talking about children and as, as both of you said that you know children you know, they, they they do they watch their parents they watch anyone older than them, but especially their parents and they tend to copy what their parents do now mm. i strongly believe that marriage should be between a man and a woman and there should be both the father and the mother in active roles with the children. And I really yeah. do believe that fathers should be very careful how they treat their, 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 their wives and mothers of the, of, of the children, because mm. their sons will follow what the fathers do. Likewise, mm. the mother should be very careful how they treat their husbands, the fathers of their children, because their daughters are going to follow the mother's and high. So it, it really, really, really is your, your teachers, your church wardens, your everything. So yet you, you've got to be careful how you treat each other in front of your kids. And I really do believe that's why mm. there's so, 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 so many kids growing up today that are in trouble. And there's so many people not getting married. And that you know, here in uh, at Srinor, I know of one woman. She has six different children to six different men. And those six children have six different last names. I mean, where does the child even begin with that? You know, and <laughs> the chaos, 
that can come from such a situation can really be a turn off for children. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, I know somebody who, I mean, he's honest about it. He's an American actor, very successful guy. I think he was actually raised in a Christian home, but his parents divorced. And he did say that, you know, he mm. felt like in life he'd accomplished a lot in his career. And, you know, he's done very, very well. But the one thing that he never did was get married. And he, I think he was engaged, but he broke up for some reason. But he said that deep down, he believes that his parents' divorce affected his attitude towards marriage. Because mm-hmm. even at that right. age, he was probably almost 50 or in his 50s when he wrote this book. And he said he still had memories of his parents arguing, you know, when he and his little brother as children mm-hmm. would be in the room and they would hear their parents arguing. Can you imagine what a child would feel like? Mm-hmm. And there are many people now, honestly, who mm-hmm. say, oh, I don't believe in marriage. But if you really look deep down, why? It's trauma from their <laughs> parents. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. If but, your but, father treat your mother very badly, why would you want to get married as a girl, right? Or even as a boy, if your mom was the kind of woman who was just emotionally abusive to your father, always put him down, maybe even physically abusive, you could exactly. grow up thinking that women are like that, especially if you didn't have mm. examples to counter it. Because if you if you have counter examples that helped, right? And mm-hmm. actually know somebody whom this helped. Active. His parents had a really nasty divorce. So he just grew up thinking that everybody's home is like that. Parents fight all the time. And then something happened. One day he went to a friend's house and he saw this boy's parents. They were so like lovey-dovey with each other, playing, joking, laughing. And he said to me that that day, he actually ran out of the house and cried Aww. because he saw something that he didn't believe could happen. Yeah. Yeah. Guess That's, what happened yeah. to him? He changed his mindset. He began to realize that, hey, in some homes, there's actually love. Guess what? Mm. Today you marry your children. That's like that old thing, isn't it? Like, you know, you never know who's watching. You know, live your life in a exactly. Christian way. But, uh, but, but on Christian. the other side, but on the other side of the coin too, there was, there, people are always doing studies, scientists and things are always doing studies on twins, identical twins and everything. And there's one mm. study that I remember was uh, written a couple of years ago. And we're talking to identical twins. One was a raging alcoholic. Mm-hmm. with a down and out on skid row and all the rest of it and the other one was a total t total successful yeah. lawyer everything going for him so they yeah. asked them they asked the, the the brother the alcoholic why do you think you're an alcoholic well it's because i was brought up with an alcoholic father and i watched my father get drunk every day so i followed mm-hmm. suit and they asked the other brother the successful one why are you success, successful in your teetotal? Because I was brought up in a house with an alcoholic father and I saw him get drunk every day and I saw the damage <laughs> it did. So that was two brothers brought up in the same household. Mm. You know, so attitude. Attitude. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But you are so right because I think sometimes we have more power than we think. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I think sometimes, like what you said, there are actually people who have made up their minds you know like let's say you grew up your dad was a womanizer or whatever and you mm-hmm. make up your mind as a guy because you saw the effect of that on your mother and you're mm-hmm. like i'm never gonna cheat on my wife mm-hmm. and it could work right and then like you said you have the other person who's like oh my dad i just followed him which <laughs> and i also think that you really have to be deliberate right if you don't want to follow your dad then you have to create those experiences where maybe there's a man in your mm. local area, your dad's friend, even who is really like a nice family man. And you can watch him and you can ask him questions. Uncle, was what, what, you know, why was it like this? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? But then if you're only having your dad and his friends, because I really think that would become part of what we expose ourselves to. If you're only hanging mm-hmm. out with your dad and his friends, they're going to the bar every day and drinking, you really have to you make know, up no your difference. mind you don't need to be like him mm. and remove yourself from that situation. Because I really mm. think that when you look at the impact of what your parents have done on your lives, on your life, that really, that really um, affects you. I know somebody who walked out of an abusive marriage because she grew up in a situation where her father was abusive to her mother. Her mother left mm. her dad. Then she got married. It was literally like a cycle repeating itself. And mm. initially she tried to persevere, but she said to her, the thing that really 
that made her decide to leave was the day her husband beat her in front of their daughter. Mm. She said it took her back to her own childhood. And she was yeah. like, no, 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 this cycle has to end. That mm. was the day that yeah. she lost her mind. Yeah. So you really have to find, and it's difficult, of course, like we've talked about for some women, they think of the finances, mm. how would I cope by myself mm-hmm. and all these things, but it really takes that courage and you have to make that decision. Every one of us has the power to make that decision and mm. find people who can support you till you yep. get to that point mm. where at least you can be strong. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I really do. What say you, Sedona? That, that Sedona I mean, had the final word. No, I mean, it's just, we've said it all, haven't we? And it's just, be mindful of the fact that, you know, submission is not slavery. And yeah. if, you, if you're being abused and you go to a church and you're told to persevere and your life is in danger or your mental health is in danger or your physical health is in danger, then you're probably not in the right church. Seek another form of help. Exactly. Um, or, or, you know, reach out to, there's so many free charity lines out there that you can ring. And, and just remember, you know, you're, you're called to submit that the man is called to love you the way Christ loved the church. And Amen. that's a sacrificial kind of love. That's a, a love yes. that he's willing to lay down his life for yep. the church. Um, and so if you're doing your bit, but he's not doing his bit, then, you know, and, and, and your life is in, is in danger or your health is in danger or whatever else is in danger, then, you know, I think you really need to get the right advice and get the right the right kind of help you know I think we just had to clarify this because I think last week we kind of talked about different things and it just all got wrapped up and we we thought you know hang on a minute you know we don't want people to walk away getting the wrong idea um that you know you have to stay for xyz reasons um because you know you don't um if 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 you're in danger your life is in danger you're being abused then seek help um, and you know, so. by all means, do not divorce if you don't want to divorce, but separate and work mm-hmm. on your issues. And if you can work on it, fine. If you can't work on it, and you know you can, um, you'll get no medals for staying for staying in an abusive marriage. Um, no, no. Your kids are I, watching. Yeah, you and as you said, you're you exactly. exactly. Every mm. year, the UK publishes statistics. I can't remember what the stats were um, last year or so when I looked, but they're quite shocking. In this country, every year, a significant number of women die at the hands of a partner. Mm. Well, mm. that is the worst case scenario with abuse. And even if you don't die physically, there's a psychological death. Yeah. You, know, you see those women who walk around, but they're, they're literally like a blank person. They just, mm. they can't mm. even think to themselves. Their confidence is so low. Like you're not really a functioning hum- human being, even though you're alive. Uh, uh. Yep. Yeah, your, 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 your spirituality has literally been drained from you. It really yeah. has. The life's been sucked out of you. Yeah, it's, and, 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 and that's sad. And as I said at the top of this conversation, there are men in situations like that too. So there mm-hmm. are. So yeah, definitely seek help. And as you say, Sidoni, you know, we are not encouraging divorce or not. What we're encouraging is that uh, if you need help, seek help. There are loads of people there to mm-hmm. help you. And I like what you said, Sedona. So you know, uh, separate for a while, take a break. Because I'm to say that absence makes the heart grow fonder. Mm-hmm. So if, if you need, need a couple months away or whatever to get your head together, do it. Um, mm-hmm. And then for the man, try to, you know, sorry, maybe there. I said for the man, so maybe your absence will actually make him come to his senses. But you know what that saying goes? Sometimes you don't meet something, you don't see the value of something till you don't have it. Mm. Exactly. And exactly. if he's lucky enough to reconcile with you, then he'll probably <laughs> take the relationship more seriously. No, it's true. Because some people, mm. by the time they want to come and make amends, the ship has sailed. But if he's lucky yep. enough to be able to reconcile, then hopefully he'll be a better husband. And same goes yep. for men with their wives yep. in that situation, you know, with abusive That's wives. It. Let's let, let's hope. And you know, as we said, become peacemakers and not peacekeepers. That's it. Mm. Uh, I think I think I think I think you've got to do a little writing about that or something. I think you, you should. <laughs> you do, yeah. Yeah, that was that was good. <laughs> She's so proud of herself. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. I'll be calling myself BL next. You know, <laughs> happy to in brackets. Lady BL means boss lady, by the way. Okay. 
<laughs> Thank you, ladies. And, and Naomi has decided that from here on in, she's going to be the boss lady. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ambition of ambition of 2022. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we're coming. We're coming up, ladies, and believe it or not, 37 minutes. Okay. Oh wow. So. Wow. Yeah, we've, we've, we've done you, it. Again. I've, been, I've been keeping a close eye on everything. I, I've enjoyed it's tonight lovely. again. I uh, have. Thank you. Yeah, it's been really good. Thank yes, it's uh, been fantastic. Thank you, ladies. So, so we will publish the two parts now on marriage, and then next oh, week we will carry on. Um, with something with, else. Yeah, with something else. Yes. I don't know what. Um, I don't know what, what we'll decide. We'll oh, we'll <laughs> decide. The last world is minute. our oyster. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> fine. Last, last minute decision. <laughs> you ladies know what we will decide, and we'll put a post out. We'll, we'll decide yeah. by Monday, and we'll put a post out, and so people can send questions in if they want to. Yeah. Let's do that. There you go. That would, that would be absolutely brilliant to be able to answer some yeah. questions from people. Or even yes, if they come we'll on live that. onto uh, the Facebook thing, they could type up their yeah. question, we could oh, answer them. You know, fire them at us, and let's see. Yeah. Put we us on the that, spot. Really. Yeah, come on. Put we, should us on the yeah. we should just we'll, pick we'll, up topic we'll publish it and then like people that don't want to do it publicly can message us or email us. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, cool. But we'll put out the topic for next week so people okay. can get in touch with any questions. Yes. Okay. We will definitely. Lovely. All right. So don't like take us out in prayer, my dear. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for wonderful fellowship. Thank you for laughter. Thank you for truth. Thank you for your word. Thank you for encouragement um, that we are to one another. Um, we ask, Lord, that you would be with all the ladies that are listening to this and um, for anyone that finds themselves in any situation that has been described or discussed here today um, and feel like they need help. Give them the courage to seek the help they need, Lord. Um, help them to reach out to a fellow sister, either in the group or in their local church or in the local community or online. Just help them to reach out to a lifeline, Lord. Thank you for the wonderful resources that you have put our way. We ask, Lord, that you will keep each and every one that listen to this. And um, bless Giselle and Gloom and keep us all in good health until we meet again next week. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That was lovely. Amen. Thank you. And folks watching this on playback, uh, either on YouTube or wherever you're going to be watching and playback, if you want to speak to any of us, there our web addresses are in the description. Christian Woman UK is uh, cwinuk.org and Pearls of Grace is pogmuk.com. There's on both websites, there's links for messages to be sent to us. We, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, Christian Woman in the UK, okay, is a woman's group. Pearls of Grace is a mixed group. Uh, but even if a man wants to get in touch with Christian Women in the UK, we're here to, to, to help speak with them. We too. won't turn you away. No, we, 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 we will not turn anyone away. We really mm -hmm. won't. So if you need to speak with us, contact us. It's in the description. And mm -hmm. uh, we will gladly speak with you. And we can help uh, put you in the right direction to uh, actual professional uh, help. Okay, we're here for spiritual support. And that's it. So... Until next week, everybody, on playback. Until next week, good night, and may God bless each and every one of you. <laughs>